I envision a world, right, where, where all this money came in, the tech has to get better, right? Whether it's QR codes on everything or, you know, yeah. like just easy, ease of use, right? Because, I mean, there are apps coming out now that make it easier for my son to walk around a card show with a phone and say, okay, there are this many of this. There are, you know, this is right. worth this much. Here's what this card is. Here's why it's a different parallel than what I thought it was. Like all the stuff coming in, I think what you're doing is real high level stuff, right? Because as you said, narrative driven, I have a, you know, a card that might be rare in, you know, in, in PSA, but it's rare because it's a card that is well, old Jordan enough. Fleer is a perfect example. Like I'm curious, data scientists look at trends and outliers. Is that, is that fair or not? Sure. Were there any, like, I have some outliers in my head. I remember we had KK sports on and he said the Soto tops Chrome had a 97% gem rate or something yeah, like, like that. 93. Like 90. Yeah. That probably it comes down. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, what were some outliers for, that you saw? What were some things you're like, the data came back and you're like, what? Uh, it was like stuff that people now are very in tune with. I think what I was really early towards like the hypers are like way undervalued relative to others in prison, for example, because it was just like, they're such hard grades. And by like, you know, not in an order of magnitude, but by a nice discount, like they grade really poorly or it's the shocks and optic and all these different things. I was trying to think about what parallels existed that were consistently undergraded where the tens should either be worth more because they're hard to, Yet, or everything else, actually, a nine is almost a 10. And so maybe the nines could appreciate over time. And I, I actually couldn't really get to a solid answer of like which ones were undervalued there, the tens, obviously, but there could have been a play on the nines even. But it was stuff like that that I looked at. I mean, I look at one of the things that I think is really cool for the future is like, I know every time a new, you know, 86 Flair pops 10 or a Jerry yeah. Rice pops 10 or like without having to keep it open. Like I right. keep the Lewis Hamilton Futero one open on my browser. Yeah, I refresh uh, right. it every day. I, every to time see I hear another one, another one yeah. pops. Right. And so like there's an alerting system that could play into this eventually over time. You know, I'm trying to build an integration. So, you know, if you want to manage these things in Google Sheets and Excel, you type in a generate ID, you'll get a population updated every day. Like I want this to be integrated into what you're doing. I don't have sort of some ego and like you have to come to generate.com to get value. I want this to be where you're consuming and, and sort of finding joy in this hobby. And so but it's all that stuff that's super fun. So it's like, you know, that's why I like I get picked up by Sports Collector Daily and stuff, because it's just it's some high level stuff there. And every time, you know, there's some big picture trends, they pick it up. And some of these things are anomalies and, or not. I got a question for you. Hit me. I'm wondering whether your, your, your proprietary blend, your, your, your secret sauce, your seven herbs and spices, whatever, whatever we're going to use here today <laughs> is going to be able to do something like this, right? I have a theory about a grading company that says these particular cards were graded one way in a certain time period. And in another time period, they're being graded a different way. For yep. example, and just a hypothetical example here, folks, don't read anything into this at all. But let's say hypothetically, before everybody was jumping on, let's come up with one at random that is just some up um, oh, thin air. 1990 Marvel Impel. Let's just say a bunch of those are being submitted before everybody jumped all over the Marvel crap, right? And I want to look at what the gem rate of those were, or the nines and tens of those were, in, say, 2019, 2020, like it's six-month or 12-month period, and then compare that to, say, the ones I got back last I mean, ones that are being graded now, like backlog stuff, you know, the whole deal. Like, I'd, I'd be curious if there's a Graded way- 2019, graded now. And is there a way to do that? So, I mean, that's the goal, right? So I only have this data going back up until February 21. But that's that's the move going forward is that you'll be able to go back until and reference that data forever. But I can't go back into history when I wasn't collecting this. So you can still you can still paint that. You can pull that data together in certain ways on the Internet. But it's pretty hard to come by. But yes, well, that's it. I can't. That's, I mean, that's I have cool. to tie my own shoes. And you can, I, I mentioned just to Andrew today with the post that I put out, like there's certainly opportunities if you go and target cards that were graded in March through June of last year, they're, they're like severely undergraded because PSA was hiring new graders. They have this guarantee in place. They're incentivized to round down, not round up. Like, you know, they have to, you know, they're going to err on the side of being cautious as opposed to being aggressive because now they're on the hook. And so when the market is looking at these cards and saying, wait a second, that's not a PSA 10. Graders don't want to be held accountable for that. And then you also have this sort of like pop control conversation, which I don't think is a mandate by any means, but I think is a bias, which is they're not, they know the significance of these cards when they come across their desk. They're going to give those cards that are picking up momentum or, 
you know, these iconic cards, they're just going to scrutinize them much more. And so I think PSA gets a little bit of an unfair shake in the sense of like, they're doing this on purpose. And I think the reality is it's just like a human behavior psychology thing, which is like, look, we brought on all these new people. It's a problem for us. They don't communicate much of that at all. People are sort of undergrading and there's opportunities in that. And I think it's also unfortunate for the market. If you just happen to have your cards graded in certain periods of time where people are getting ramped up and things are changing on their side and, you know, there's, there's some turnover, whatever that might be, you know, you're subject to sort of just like what the machine gives you that day. And that's a little bit unfortunate because that might not be what you expected when you sent your cards in. So thank you all for listening to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronzo Mai. I wanted to tell you about a new service that we have starting as of today, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So as a part of our partnership with SGC, we got 50 free submissions every single month. And many of you have taken advantage of that. And it's amazing that we could have the opportunity to 650 episodes, 675 episodes in, to go ahead and give back to our community. As people were sending those cards in, they asked, can we send 5, 10, 20 more cards to you guys? We'll pay for it, but we wanted them graded with SGC. You guys know SGC is turning cards around in 13 to 14 business days, uh, have incredible customer service, and their secondary market values are going up day after day after day. And that's exciting for the hobby and exciting for the grading landscape. So we didn't want to just rush into it. We wanted to do it right. And what we did was I relocated here to Boca Raton, Florida. I opened up a PO box maybe five minutes away from SGC. And I will be hand delivering and hand picking up the cards. So you don't have to worry about anyone else touching your cards. It will be me. And I will update you every step of the way. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to personally pick up the cards from a PO box, prep them, new card saver, new penny sleeve, and deliver them to SGC every single Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Well, it lets the stragglers over the weekend come back through on Monday and gives me a day to prep, and it basically gives SGC the entire week to work on grading those cards. Once your cards pop, only then at the end of the process will you be paying for the service. It's $25 per card, simple as that, and the turnaround times have never been faster. We're hearing right now 13, 14, less than 20 business days. So there it is. 9170 Glades Road, number 135 is the P.O. Box in Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. 9170 Glades Road, number 135, Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. Of course, you could shoot me an email or shoot me a text anytime, and I'm always available. Many of you already have my email. It's Goldberg at gmail.com or my cell phone number, 215-519-9154. Reach out with any questions. I could walk you through the process. I've hopped on the call with quite a few of you, and I'm happy to do that. Love you, Luca Nation.